In this video we will demonstrate how to connect an abutment interface to a solid tooth from a closed mesh tooth library. We generally refer to the abutment interface, as seen here, as an abutment sleeve. This abutment sleeve fits over the implant abutment, and is later joined to the tooth from the tooth library. Essentially it becomes the inner fitting surface of the crown, which lies against the implant abutment. The abutment sleeve is offset slightly, in other words, there exists a small clearance space between the abutment sleeve and the implant abutment. This clearance space is determined by the implant manufacturers. Notice here how the mesh exists merely as a thin shell without a volume to it. There is also an edge loop which surrounds the part. This forms the junction between the abutment sleeve and the tooth. For this demonstration, and for ease of explaining the concepts, we have left out the dental model. Hypothetically then, the analogs have already been placed into the model. This was done by using the ICP alignment tool module, whereby the analogs were parented to the component scan bodies, these were then superimposed onto the intraoral scan bodies. The abutments with abutment sleeves, were then snapped into the analogs. If you are unsure how this works, please visit the ICP alignment module videos as a refresher. Let us begin. We will first hide all parts in the scene, except for the abutment sleeves. With the abutment sleeve being selected, navigate to the crown and bridge menu, in particular the implant crown submenu. Press select an abutment and make tube button. This will create a blue transparent tube, which extends deeper into the z-axis and into the hypothetical dental model. If you notice that the tube has extended into the opposite direction, go back, use Ctrl Z, and use the other button on the menu. This will create a tube in the correct direction. Let us zoom in to demonstrate the tube. The tube consists of a defined wall thickness, which safeguards the final crown from becoming too thin. Essentially the blue layer which embodies the abutment sleeve, will solidify and form part of the final crown. Although the value in the slider bar reads 1.2 mm, the actual layer thickness over the abutment sleeve is only 0.6 mm. The value on the slider bar is always doubled, this is due to the fact that the tube penetrates halfway into the mesh of the abutment sleeve. So keep in mind to always double this value. Let us adjust the value, to change the minimum allowed thickness of the implant crown to 0.8 mm. We will type in a value of 1.6 mm. When you are satisfied with the result, press the Accept Tube button. Notice how a new gray cylinder has projected itself over the top of the blue tube. This gray cylinder will be used to create the screw hole for the implant crown. Next, we will run through a possible scenario where the abutment sleeves have their normals inverted. In other words, the mesh of the abutment sleeve is turned inside out. Some implant manufacturers may have these surfaces inverted, or perhaps you may have created abutment sleeves of your own. In order to check the normals, navigate to the Model Designer menu and place a check into the Face Orientation checkbox. Notice here how the abutment sleeve is displayed in red. A red color delineates the inner surfaces of a mesh, while a blue color delineates the outer surfaces of a mesh. This is especially true here, since the abutment sleeve itself forms the inside part of the crown, while the blue part, forms the outer surface of the crown. There may be situations where a part which is imported into Blender has its normals inverted. We will briefly flip the normals here, to demonstrate. Let us go back to the crown menu and try making a tube again. We will first press the left button for making the tube. Notice here how the blue tube has projected itself into the incorrect direction, and away from the hypothetical dental model. We will go back and use the control and the Z key. This time we will use the button to the right, to make the tube. Since this tube is in the correct position, we will press the accept tube button. So please remember, use the correct button here, and this depends on the face orientation of the abutment sleeve. We will unhide all the other objects in the scene, so we can put this into practice. Notice here how the apex of the tooth is positioned very high above the junction line of the abutment sleeve, previously mentioned. If an implant crown were to be made now, this would result in a ridge between the tooth and the abutment interface. We will briefly show this. In order to generate the crown, navigate to the menu and press the Generate Implant Fixture button. The implant crown has been created, although ideally it would be better to harmonize the tooth emergence profile with the implant interface. 
We will go back a few steps by pressing the Ctrl and the Z key. This time, with the tooth being selected, use the Edit Mesh button on the menu. The mesh should be placed into a transparent mode by using the Toggle X-Ray button. In order to manipulate the tooth mesh, turn the magnet tool off temporarily. By using the C key, circular select some of the lower vertices of the tooth apex, then use the R key to rotate the selection. Here it is also important to make sure the proportional editing tool is turned on. Following this, use the G key to lower the bottom section of the tooth, so it sits closer to the abutment sleeve junction line. The entire area can also be scaled by using the S key, so the apex fits within the inner boundaries of the blue tube. To further enhance the emergence profile, invoke the magnet tool again. In this way the mesh of the tooth can adhere to the surface of the underlying blue tube, just use the G key. When you are satisfied with your work, press the object mode button. This will take you out of edit mode, then toggle out of the x-ray mode. At this point you may want to smooth the neck of the crown slightly, use the smooth crown with protection button on the menu. After this, select the tooth, then press the generate implant fixture button. Again, smooth down the underside of the implant crown. We will alter the tooth mesh for all the other abutments as well. Since this is a repetition we will speed up the video slightly. In order to generate all the implant crowns in one go, select all the teeth to be converted, then press the Generate Implant Fixture button. Once generated, select all implant crowns, and smooth these down a little. With this we will complete the tutorial. Thanks for watching this video.